What's up guys, welcome back to my video. If you wanted to make something exactly like this for your brand, social media, Instagram, TikTok, you name it, stick around and I'll show you exactly how. So the first thing you wanna do is head over to my store and purchase the oversized long sleeve t-shirt for $2. Use code SUB1K to get 50% off orders over $6. I've got a bunch of other stuff on the store as well as hoodies, long sleeves, and I'll constantly be adding every week. Once you have downloaded that, I need you to go to blender.org and download Blender, which is a free to use 3D application. Once all of that is downloaded, you can go to your project file and you'll find designs, project files, and textures. For textures, you don't have to worry about all of that. It's all been set up. For project files, you're gonna get your Alembic file, which is your ABC, your Blender file, and your OBJ. And then for designs, which is where you're gonna place your logo or branding, you're gonna get two PSDs. So the first thing you want to do is open up Blender. And much like all my other 3D mockups, you'll see that there's a static 360, a regular static, walking 360, and then walking straight. So we're going to be working with the walking 360. Once this is set up and you know where everything is, we're going to go back to the downloaded file and click on the oversized long sleeve PSD. Now you can see there's already a full send branding on there. If you want to see where the positions are, you can just click on the R by position to reveal it. So this is going to be your right arm, left arm, back, front. So you can go ahead and hide these. Now you can drag and drop your logos and place them wherever you want. So I'm just gonna keep them as is. I'm also gonna change the color of the garment. So I'm thinking, let's make it like a little bit of a, a light gray color. So you can just double click on this rectangle and you'll get this color picker set up. Now what I want you to do is also go into, go back to your downloaded file and click on the second Photoshop document. This is gonna be the inside of your garment. So we're going to change it to, the, to a similar color. And then once we're happy with both of those, we can click save on both of them. And we go back into Blender. You can click on the material preview and then back onto the render preview. So you can see it's already been updated for you. Now, if you want to change the background, you can just click on the background and then adjust it down at the bottom here. So I'm going to make this red like full send. Now, once you've changed one, you'll notice that all the rest have been updated. Now make sure when you do render that both the eye and the camera are revealed. So let's render out the static one. So for output settings, we're gonna to go to render. Uh, depending on your PC, you can keep it at 128, but if you have a really overkill PC, then you can pump that thing higher. So you can just adjust it here. I'm using a Mac, so I normally keep it around 128. Uh, then we can go to output. This is where you can adjust your ratio, aspect ratio. So if you want it for reels, you can go 10, 1080 by 1920, and you'll get something like that. If you want it square, you can just change it to 1080 by 1080. And I'm going to be exporting it for YouTube. So I'm going to change the bottom to 1080 and the top to 1920. Once you're happy with that, you can go to your output and click on where you'd like to render this. So I'm going to create a new folder in the downloaded folder and say renders, and then just rename this to test one. Underscore, underscore. This is going to render out as images. Now, I notice a lot of you get confused when I say that. Uh, so make sure when you do render out as images that you have a program to import it as a sequence and then edit it out. So I'm just going to show you that on Premiere Pro, for example. So you'll see when you render it out how there's an image 65, 66, 67. They're all going to be images, okay? So these are all PNG images, which is better for rendering because you're able to stop and start your render if anything crashes. Um, to do that in Blender, if it does crash, so say it crashes at frame 100, you just can go to your frame range, which is in the output panel, and say start at 100 and end at 500, and then you can restart the process. Now that we have this image sequence, uh, we can go into Premiere Pro, we're gonna import, Click on the top one, say show options and make sure image sequence is on. This is now going to import a, all the images to create a video sequence. You can do this on majority of editing software. So if you don't have access to Premiere Pro, there should be something else available for you. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a like, comment, and sub if you're new and don't forget to turn the notification bells on. I drop a video once a week, either mock-up or maybe a full length tutorial depending on how much time I have. So I really do appreciate your support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.